Hey there, Brian Goulet here of GouletPens.com. And for 14 years, I've been a dealer hooked on my own product, fountain pens. Now you might think to yourself, a pen's a pen. How different can pens really be? Well, having seen as many fountain pens as I've seen, I can say there's some pretty interesting ones out there. Now I've amassed quite a sizable collection of pens for myself that I can use in all these types of videos and whatnot. But some of my unusual ones seldom really get any screen time. Well, I thought it would be fun to go digging through my pen trays and pick out my selection of the 10 strangest fountain pens that I have and show you what I think makes them interesting. Now, I'm not trying to dog on any of these pens. To me, they're all weird and wonderful, and I love all of them, uh, almost more so because of how unique they are. All right, I'm gonna kick it off here with the Rotring Core, which I only acquired this past August when I was given it as a gift from a PenCast fan who said that I just needed to have one of these since it's kind of known as one of the strangest fountain pens around. Now, what makes this a bit odd is the sort of futuristic cyberpunk design with a mixture of colors, textures, and materials used. And then when you open it up, the grip kind of looks like it's melting and falling off the rest of the pen. It's the only pen with a grip like this that I have ever seen. I actually find the grip kind of comfortable, but I have to say it feels a little disorienting when writing with it since the relationship of the nib is in this different place than every other pen that I've ever used. Now, I don't know what I would actually use this pen for. I think I'm basically just gonna keep it around as a talking piece. Now, this Delta Amalfi is a pen that gets brought up from time to time on our pen cast, and I love how much Drew is bothered by this pen. <laughs> this was made about a decade ago before Delta shut down and then spun back up. It's named after the Amalfi Coast in Southern Italy. And I can see elements like water, olive wood, some kind of nautical theme. Um, and it all kind of makes sense to me, but I think I can objectively also look at this pen and say that this mashup of different colors and materials does kind of look a little strange. I love it though. Others might not, but who cares? It's my pen and I'm glad I have it. Now, if you thought that the Amalfi was a bit much, then I don't know what you're gonna think about the Jin Hao Dragon. This thing jumps the shark for sure. Not even trying to be a practical pen. Not only is it ostentatious, but it's absurdly heavy. And even with my big hands, I can only stand to write with this thing for a few minutes before I need to take a break. The dang thing weighs 99 grams overall. I think it's the heaviest pen that we currently sell. And while it's not the heaviest in my entire collection, I think it's in the top three. You can get it in a more subtle antiqued black, which is kind of crazy to say that that's subtle, but compared to the gold, yeah, I would say so. And yeah, I have both in my collection because they're pretty affordable and I like having pens that can double as billy clubs or boat anchors. My favorite detail is the little red jewels in the dragon's eyes. That to me is the icing on the cake. Now this is the only pen on the whole list that we actually sell on Goulet pens. So yeah, like go check it out there if you want. I don't really know what this next pen is called because it has no branding on it. It's one that I got when doing a nib tuning seminar at the DC Pen Show years ago with Richard Bender. Now, after this last couple of pens, this one is remarkably simple. But what makes it weird is the fact that every single part on this pen is a different color than the other parts that it touches. I think if I was going to be performing as a circus clown, it would fit right into my attire. Now, I don't ever actually write with this thing, but it's one of the strangest color combinations that I have on any pen in my collection. Lamy has been a brand where it's been so easy to slide down the slope of collecting because they do so many different colors of their popular models. But there was a phase in the 90s where they tried some things a bit outside of what you might expect from them. And a perfect example of that is the Lamy Lady, or as I affectionately call it, the Golden Cow. It looks so 90s to me, but what's actually really unique about this pen is the fact that the body is made of porcelain. It's the only pen I have in my entire collection made of porcelain. It's a bit heavy, but it feels kind of cool to the touch, which I actually kind of like. 
And the nib on this pen is really cool. It wraps down around the feed, which is something you don't see often with fountain pens. Now I'm sure this thing was a fortune to produce and they're gonna be kind of hard to come by, but they'll pop up on eBay every now and then if you're interested for yourself. The Stipula Da Vinci is actually a really cool pen. Very few fountain pens have retractable nibs because the engineering required is pretty crazy and this is no exception. It's a twist retractable, but unlike the Pilot Vanishing Point or the Lamy Dialogue 3, this thing has a full-size number six nib on it. It has this cool door that sort of slides open as the nib comes out of it. And to add to the uniqueness, it has a flexible titanium nib on it. The fit and finish is actually really nice and the tight weaved matte carbon fiber is really well done. It's actually a pretty nice pen. But I have to admit, it's a pretty odd writing experience by the time that big nib and everything needed to move it around and you know fit inside of there, it's, it's a pretty odd hold in the hand. It's a long, fat pen, so it's pretty weird to write with. But I love the detail of the center band that you can twist to raise and lower the clip. This is kind of a tinkerer's pen. So I sort of joked earlier about the Jinhao Dragon being suitable as a billy club. Well, this next pen was actually sort of designed to be a weapon. It's called the Schrade Tactical Fountain Pen. And while I don't think that they make them anymore, uh, I think it's actually pretty cool. And I think if it was still made today, it would be a pretty good fit since you have this whole like everyday carry kind of movement that's come about. Uh, I think this one is kind of made to fit right into that. Uh, it's made of some very solid aluminum and it's big, but not absurdly big. It's actually not a bad pen to write with. And if I ever drive my car into a lake and need to puncture my window to escape, or maybe if I get attacked by a mugger and need to defend myself, I'll be glad I have the tactical pen in my hand. Now I'm gonna change gears just a touch here as this next pen looks pretty normal, almost unassuming. You vintage pen fans may recognize this one pretty quickly as it has a fairly iconic filling mechanism. And that's what puts it on this list for me. It's the Schaefer Snorkel. And these were produced between 1952 and 1959. And I sought this out because the filling mechanism was so unique, I just needed to own one. It was so incredibly innovative and it took a crazy amount of engineering to develop this. And here's why. When you unscrew the back of the pen, it extracts this long tube out from the feed, that's the snorkel. Once fully extracted, you keep twisting the knob and it's gonna draw the ink inside the pen body. When you're done, you reverse the knob and it retracts the snorkel back in. And you've just filled your pen without having to submerge your nib into the ink. It's also great for when you're trying to get the last drops out of a nearly empty bottle. I can imagine that they stopped producing these because they were probably pretty expensive and complicated to repair, but you can't deny it's pretty cool. Now, if I say the name Twisby, you're probably going to think about clear demonstrator pens with piston fillers and very sleek modern look to them, right? Well, around a decade ago, they made a small run of a pen called the Twisby Micarta. This very much non-demonstrator cartridge converter Twisby is made of a composite linen material that has sort of a raw fibrous feel to it. I've never seen any other commercial pen maker with a Micarta pen. I know that it's sort of coveted as a gem by hardcore pen fans. So it's honestly just, just a little bit of a flex on my part to show you that I have one. <laughs> now along the lines of the Twisby with the Micarta pen, the last one on this list comes from another brand that you might know, Banu. These days, Banu has really started to dial things in with larger pens and some stunning custom resins. Well, they've had some experiments that they've done along the way. And one of those experiments, I just couldn't pass up because of how unusual that it was. I'm talking about the Banu Parrot. Now, I actually think this is kind of a cool pen and it's made really well, just like all of Banu's pens are. But something about this pen just kind of weirds me out. I think it's the jeweled eyes that sort of stare into my soul as I'm looking at the pen. It kind of reminds me of Sir Hiss from the animated Disney Robin Hood. You know, the snake that would like hypnotize with his eyes. I feel like this parrot is kind of trying to do that to me. That, and in order to uncap the pen to write with it, you're essentially decapitating the parrot. And <laughs> if you post it, you have this parrot that's just sort of staring at you while you write. 
And if you don't post it and you leave it on your desk, it's also sort of staring at you with those dead eyes. It's a writing experience that I don't really get with many other pens, let me put it that way. I'm glad that they made this, and I think Banu has some of the most creative pen designs out there today. But I'm also sort of glad to keep this parrot in its cage. So there's my list of the strangest pens in my personal collection. I'll say I had a lot of fun putting this together, and I started out with a pretty big list, so I would really enjoy doing more of these videos if you like them. What are some of the weirdest pens that you have or just weird pens that you know exist out there? I would love to hear about it in the comments. So let me know down there if you get a chance. Now you can't really check out any of these pens on gouletpens.com except the dragon. Uh, so I'm sorry if I got you all amped up about these and then just wish you good luck as you go find them, but good luck, I guess. If you have any other pen, ink, or paper needs, jump on over to gouletpens.com, and we have lots more videos and stuff on our YouTube channel if you'd like. Thank you so much for watching, and right on.